This video will show you how to use a cash flow budget to begin creating your financial plan. Let's start by exploring a simple one year budget. Cash flow budgets are a format to show all the cash coming in and going out of your business over time. It's broken into three sections. First is cash flows from operations. Second is cash flows from investments. And third is cash flows from financing. And it's important to note here that this is a cash flow budget, so it's forward looking, it's looking towards the future. It's used for planning out your future finances. There's also cash flow statements, which are looking at history. Let's look at each of the sections to explain them. So the operating income and expenses are all directly related to your day-to-day -day business. Whereas investment income and investment expenses have to do with buying and selling assets that your business relies on. And financing income is income from loans or equity investments um, and paying back loans and, and equity investments and dividends. Before we work through an example, let's look at some of the other tabs in this spreadsheet. So besides the cash flow budget that we're on now, we also have a help page that includes some instructions and some common expense accounts, which you might want to think about or refer to. Besides the simple cash flow budget, we have a more complicated cash flow budget, which breaks out the your operating expenses into variable expenses versus fixed expenses. We have a long-term cash flow template, which looks at your cash flows over a 10-year period, but you could use it for one to 10 years, and this is annualized rather than monthly. And then the same thing, a long-term 10-year cash flow budget annualized except broken, your operating expenses are broken into variable and fixed expenses. And last, we have two examples of one year cash flow budgets. And one is with the simple operating expenses and one is with the more complex variable versus fixed operating expenses. So you could see what a completed one might look like. Let's go back to start an example in this more simple one year cash flow sheet. We'll pretend we're starting a very basic poultry enterprise. So to start, I like to change the months to a, to a series that matches the pace of my business. So this, this pastured poultry enterprise, we're gonna say that maybe we start to raise chicks in April. So I might wanna start in March, cause that might be when I'm starting to buy in equipment. And if you wanna get real nifty, you could just pull the months across like this. It fills in. Next thing you wanna do is enter any starting cash you might be starting off with in your business. So let's say we've got a few thousand dollars cash. And all you have to do is put it into the first month and the sheet will automatically calculate for the rest of the months. Okay, what kind of income does this business have? We'll say that we sell our chickens at the farmer's market. Maybe we also sell some to restaurants. And maybe once a year we sell Thanksgiving turkeys. Farmer's market, maybe where we work and live, starts in June, we'll say. And we're making 8,000 a month at the farmer's market. June, July, August, September, October, even. 
Now let's enter some restaurant sales. We'll say sell about $2,000 a month and through the beginning of the winter. And these Thanksgiving turkeys, we just sell all in one shot in November. Okay. So next let's fill out some operating expenses. And we'll just stick to the basics here. We'll say we have labor expense. And I always like to start with labor and if I'm the farmer filling this out, I like to think of myself being paid out of this labor budget and I want to always remember to pay myself for my work uh, and include that in your budget. Because if you don't include your in your budget, you're never gonna pay yourself. So besides labor, let's say we have feed, we have some processing expenses, We have fuel, some supplies, like maybe fencing equipment and waterers and all that. Maybe a land lease. I'll say there's some utilities. Okay. So let's say we're paying ourselves $2,000 a month throughout the year. Start buying and feed in April and buy it through September. We begin our processing in May. Through September. We have some fuel costs throughout the year. Most of our supplies maybe we buy at the beginning of the season. And then a little supply budget for the rest of the year. And our lease, maybe we pay a, a monthly payment of a thousand dollars a month. And we pay a couple hundred dollars in utilities some sort every month. Okay, well, let's see what that business looks like. So the way to use the sheet is at the beginning there's a starting amount of cash for every month. And at the end of the sheet, there's an ending amount of cash. And in this template, it'll automatically turn red when you're under zero. And the thing to remember is that you can never really be under zero, because this would mean you'd have negative money in your bank account. So unless you have some kind of um, credit line at a bank or something where you could go dip below zero and borrow from the bank automatically, um, you don't really want to get into this negative territory. And let's say also for this business, oh, something else to note is so that we started off $5,000 and let's see where we end up at the end of February, at the end of our year with $8,700. So we were a profitable business. Five th we made $3,700 profit, but still we have this period where we have negative. So what can we do about that? Well, I think the best way to deal with that is to get a small loan at the beginning of the season. And April is the first first month where we go negative. So we want to be able to get this loan either during April or probably sometime before April because it doesn't just happen overnight that you get a loan. There's some paperwork involved. Let's say we get an FSA microloan in March. And you want to look at where do you go the most negative during the season. So at some point, we're going to be $8,800 negative. So in March, if we took out a $10,000 loan, that would set us up 
so that during the rest of the season, even if we have months of negative cash flow, we don't we always have some amount of cash in our in our bank account. And remember that you do want to pay back the loan, and it's nice to be able to keep it all in one sheet and pay it back at the end of the season if it's just an operating loan that's meant to finance your startup costs for one season. And we have enough money in February to pay this back. So say we're going to pay back the principal on the loan, and maybe there's also some interest. So don't forget that it costs money to loan, to take out a loan. So we pay back the principal of $10,000, and let's say there is $350 of interest. So it eats a little bit into our profit, but we still have our profit there, and now we don't have this impossible situation where you're dipping into the negative during the year. And that's essentially how you use the cash flow budget to plan out your business, to look at where you're making the most income, where you have the most expenses, and figuring out if you need some kind of loan or to change something about your plan in order to make the business work in reality. Now one more example I'd like to show is just looking at the complex budget. So this is the budget where the operating expenses are split between variable and fixed expenses. And for just a brief explanation of what these are, so variable expenses change according to how you scale up and down your production. So if we had, if we wanted to scale up our production and sell more at the farmer's market, then we would need more chickens and we would need more feed. We would probably need more labor. We definitely need to pay more um, to our processor because they usually charge by the bird. And some things like fuel and supplies you might even consider variable if you're buying um, a certain kind of supply by the bird um, or if you're using your truck more because you have more birds and more trips. So I'm going to move some of this some of these numbers over into the other sheet. So we're just going to do a lot of copy and pasting. So let's start by copy pasting all the months over. And remember we started with $5,000. And then let's paste over our income. Okay, so now comes the time where we have to figure out which is variable expense and which is fixed expense. And for this simple business, notice I did this on purpose, I think these first five expenses we could say are variable expenses. And the last two on this list, your lease and your utilities, I'm going to say are fixed expenses. And that's because once we've signed that lease and once we're starting to use electricity or water, these are fixed, these are with us. And if we produce fewer birds, your lease payment would still be the same amount. If you produce more birds, as long as you're not using more land and taking out another lease, your lease is going to be the same. So let's paste those into the fixed expenses. And then what else do we have here? We had a loan, right? So micro loan, principal and interest. Okay. So now it's the same turnout, right? We started with $5,000. We're ending February with 8350 And really, the use of this more complicated cash flow budget is just to look at these numbers here. So to start with just your operating margin, your operating profit, your margin is basically how much profit you made on your operation. And you notice it's 3700 but we only made 3350 and that's because we actually lost $350 due to financing. 
the operating margin is trying to separate out those financing income and expenses and the investment income and expenses and just focusing in on your operation, which is really what you can control the most. So that's what you want to focus on improving. Now the gross margin and gross margin percentage, the reason why we would split off the fixed versus variable expenses is because if you want to think about the things that you really can control about your business and the thing that's really important to be the most profitable on, it's really your operating income minus your variable expenses. Because sometimes with a fixed expense, something like your, your lease or if you're on a farm that has a mortgage and you're paying your mortgage, those are going to be there and those are going to be constant and you don't have too much control over them day to day, but you do have more control over your variable expenses and your variable income. So you want to focus on improving your gross margin and your operating margin um, because these are the indicators that you have the most control over. Now these were two pretty simple examples and I expect if you're financial planning for a real farm you'll have a lot more operating expenses and just a lot more variables involved. But if you follow this template or a similar cash flow budget template you'll keep all of those incomes, expenses, all those cash inflows and outflows organized in a way that really prepares you to work with the lender because when you work with the lender, really this is all they're trying to get out of you. They need to know when you're gonna be making money, how you're gonna be making money, when you're gonna be spending money, what you're spending that money on, and when you need money from them in order to make this whole operation work, and when they're gonna get paid back. And they just wanna make sure that you are very confident in these numbers. You could tell them where you're getting these numbers from, why you believe you're confident in these numbers. And that's essentially all that a business plan is. This is the heart of it, is when is money coming into this business? When is it coming out? And how can you explain that this is gonna happen?